Tommy oh. Middleton, hey, Tommy, let's pull in love. It's, uh, an 8 o'clock hour, I believe, uh, it's still 8 o'clock, um, uh, we're getting calls from uh, Montreal right now, so it's great, we have a very international audience here, which is a, which is a great thing. People listen from all over the world, and uh, they're hearing your music. Is that right? I had someone call in the other night from India. Well, I have some friends, you know. Yeah, that was to order food, by the way. Well, so what's been the greatest place so that you could say you've... Uh, you get a hot ass with food like that. <laughs> what's one of the greatest places, the venues you've played in New York City? One of the great. I mean, you played, like, in just about every place. I played but, I mean, Jimmy Weston's. I played uh, all the joints like uh, Dionysus, Dionysus. Uh, mm -hmm. I played... Uh, Okay. I've sung in a lot of joints, jellies, and all of them places. And, all, and, uh, and I became a hitman then. Mm. Yeah. See that? I've got some uh, great, great places that you've been <laughs> for so many years that you, you've you met so many great, great musicians oh, over no, no, the years. Seriously, seriously, I'm talking about um, beautiful musicians. So. Quincy, Quincy Jones, you know, <coughs> he gave me my first break in, and, uh, what's the show? First break in show business or first break on, and then on the radio? I did, the music, music. I did free and easy. Mm -hmm. I was trying to give stuff instead. Mm -hmm. uh, we have mm. to pick up a telephone call here. Hey, Rob? I'm not home. Uh -huh. Rob, are you there? <laughs> So, so Tony, uh, what can, what, can to, what would you like to sh uh, promote in terms yeah. of the show next Friday or the Friday after? Yes, uh, I, you know, I left the thing in the car. I had to, uh, but, um, mm -hmm. I'm doing uh, that and uh, what else I'm doing? God damn time, catch it up with me. That's all right. We'll, you know, that's all right. You we'll be here for a couple hours, Tony. What so when we come back, uh, <laughs> when we come back after we play this song, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that for a little bit. Sal Yeager is, is, is uh, you know who he is, right? Yeah, he's great, Sal. Yeah, Sal. I remember he's sitting with him in the diner once with Jackie Mason. Hanging out with him, I forgot everything. He's, he's the guy that did the... Uh, that's Benny right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did yeah. Really yeah. Good so we're going to play the golden age of rock and roll by the kind of a drag by the Buckinghams. On WPAT, then we're going to talk to Dennis Stefano right here on the radio on WPAT, New York's radio station. My lawyer, I love you. Stefano from the Buckinghams on the radio live in person and on the phone and I guess you're here with us aren't you? Here you are Dennis. That's not kind of a drag to be here either. 
So how has your year been so far? It hasn't been much of a drag, though, has it? <laughs> it has, and actually the, uh, the last couple of years have been very, very, very busy and very uh, joyful for me. It's uh, been great to go out there and be singing to everybody again. And, uh, and thanks to you, because for the last few years, you've been supporting me really well and getting me out there, too. So uh, it's, it's been great to, to be out there. Uh, it's such a great deal to be singing these songs to people and have them come back with all the stories that, that are connected to it. So that's, that's, that's great. What's one historical story, a historical moment you'd like to share with us on the Teddy Smith Seventh Year Reunion History, history Show tonight? My, my perspective? Yes. Uh, well, you know, there's, uh, it's amazing to me how people have, uh, have, have given us kind of like a legacy as far as what we've done and, and what our music was about at the, at back in the day. So uh, just uh, it's stories that people come back with all the time at the shows. Oh, no. And, uh, and they, they tell us about all this amazing stuff that three minutes of something we did means so much to them so it's like historically that's amazing to me because back in the day when we were 19 singing these songs uh we didn't think that it was affecting anybody we just knew that we were making records and we were on the road and playing that was a great that was it so now it's it's it really becomes a little bit more solid because we're more along in the tooth of course and we understand the, the historical part of it all you know so I, I hear one day that uh, you'll be able to come on to various radio stations with us and then do a, a live bit right here, live some live singing for us. On the East Coast, and I can actually do it. I'm going to make some time and come on there, and we'll play together on on, on, uh, on the air. Yeah, definitely. That'll be a lot of fun. Where are you now? In California? No, actually, I'm in uh, in. Uh, where am I now? I just got here. I'm a little bit uh, disoriented. I'm in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. How nice. It, it must, I guess you must have some nice weather at this time of year over there. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm playing in Cumberland, Maryland tomorrow, so I wow. actually came into Harrisburg to hook up with the band that I'm working with, and then they're playing here tonight with the Reflections, and, uh, and then the Reflections are working with me tomorrow in Cumberland. So I came to Harrisburg to hook up with them and drive to Cumberland with them tomorrow. It was the easiest way to hook up with the band, so... And yeah, I'm working a lot this year. I'm, I'm really excited about that and really pleased. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. Now, we have a song we're going to play. Uh, Tina from uh, the Upper East Side called up for this uh, great song called Susan from 1967. Anything you'd like to share with us to, to enlighten uh, uh, our great audience about, about the great song called Susan? All right. Well, the, the great thing about Susan, the song, is that, that Jim Hove and Gary Beesberg, who That's wrote the crew wrote. of the song yeah, of Jim, copy uh, uh, Jim <laughs> Hove was dating a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, girl in, on Rush Street, Chicago in the 60s. She was a go-go dancer named Susan. And uh, every song, except for Mercy, 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 that he wrote for us, uh, kind of a drag, don't you care, hey baby, and Susan are all about the same girl. <laughs> and, uh, and what's great about that is that uh, I had lunch with him not too long ago in Los Angeles, and he was like kind of reminiscing uh, about, uh, boy, it's too bad I couldn't hold on to that babe. You know, she was really great, and I, I can't believe that I lost her in less than a year. And I said, Jim, I said, wake up. She gave you five hit records. You know, it's like the, the records lasted 51 years. So, that, you know, he went, you know, you're right. He says, I still, everybody has a piece of Susan now, you know. So, so every, every time I, I, it's great for me when I'm performing the song because I know who I'm singing about. And they all kind of like, it's, it's almost like a, a history of Susan right through our hits. How many years have you been playing? A, how many years have you been playing? A, about, about, about. Been playing? Yes. Uh, this is probably my 51st year. I guess we started in 65. Wow. 50-some years you've been playing uh, playing music. That's yeah. just incredible. Well, and it's, and it's amazing that you're able to do that for that long, and that's why I'm thankful right. to uh, and grateful to all the fans for allowing us to do this music later. I just, I never thought past 40 that we'd be able to do any 60s music, you know, because music was changing so rapidly. But the Baby Boomers really uh, have hung together with, with, with all the... 60s music, which is great, and it's and it's still very much alive, and it, and it and you know so much of it holds up. I tour with a lot of the other acts mm -hmm. from that time, and everybody is just as good as they were then. Now, yeah. 
It's just amazing. You know, the younger demographic, whether they're listening to rap or whatever it happens to be, they actually call up and, and they request <coughs> 50s songs here on this radio station. 50s and 60s songs, the younger really? demographic. Really? Yeah, I think the 50s and 60s were the, were the foundation of anything that came after it. And when you listen to even the rap songs, they were sampling stuff from the 50s and 60s. So, I mean, there, there's definitely influence in there. From, you know, in the 40s, was was still kind of leaning backwards, but we still had the standards in the Greatest American Songbook, mm -hmm. which I now kind of hit on every once in a while with my Bobby Darrett stuff that I do. Okay. But it's like it's it's an amazing uh, conglomerate of music mm -hmm. that that lives now because of uh, everybody investing some time into bringing them up uh, to the surface. You know. Well, we're going to play uh, one of your great songs called Susan. And uh, look forward to uh, having you back here uh, at some point in the near future because Jim has a holiday show that he's putting together right now in December, and hopefully you'll be part of that. Okay, Mr. Dennis Stefano, thank you. We'll see if I can get out there for that. It'd be great. It'd be great to have you. Look forward to seeing you soon, and uh, let's play Susan here at WPAT. Have a wonderful weekend, by the way, in, in Maryland. Maryland, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jimmy. Good. I'm getting clips. Watching. Teddy. 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 Teddy.